contractor war and its high price. A federal judge in Washington, Ricardo Urbina, has provided another compelling argument against the outsourcing of war to gunslingers or mercenaries from the private sector. In throwing out charges against Blackwater agents who killed 17 Iraqis in Baghdad's Nisar Square in September 2007, Judge Urbina highlighted the government's inability to hold mercenaries accountable for crimes they commit. Judge Urbina correctly ruled that the government violated the Blackwater agent's protection against self-incrimination. He sketched an inept prosecution that relied on compelled statements made by the agents to officials of the State Department who employed the North Carolina security firm to protect convoys and staff in Iraq. That, he said, amounted to a reckless violation of the defendant's constitutional rights. During the last presidential campaign, Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton competed over who would take the toughest line against mercenaries. It is clear that the only way for President Obama to make good on the rhetoric is to get rid of the thousands and thousands of private gunmen or mercenaries still deployed in Iraq, Afghanistan and elsewhere. The killings in Nisau Square were hardly the first misdeeds by hired guns in Iraq or the last. The army has said contractors from firms like CACI International Incorporated were involved in more than a third of the proven incidents of abuse in 2003 and 2004 in the Abu Ghraib prison. Guards from Blackwater, which has renamed itself XC Services, pronounced Z, and other security firms like Triple Canopy have been involved in other wanton shootings. On January 7th, two former Blackwater guards were arrested on murder charges stemming from a shooting in Afghanistan last May but left two Afghans dead. Still, the government has failed to hold armed contractors or mercenaries accountable when its formal occupation of Iraq ended in 2004. The BUSH administration demanded that Baghdad grant legal immunity to private contractors. Congress has tried to cover such crimes with American law. The Military Extraterritorial Jurisdiction Act extends civilian law to contractors supporting military operations overseas and the Uniform Code of Military Justice was broadened in 2006 to cover contractors. But the government has not prosecuted a single successful case for killings by armed contractors or mercenaries overseas. An Iraqi lawsuit against American military contractors by Iraqi victims of torture at Abu Ghraib was dismissed by a federal appeals court that said the companies had immunity as government contractors. In other words, they are able to do whatever they want to do with immunity. That's crazy. Furious that the Nisera Square case was dismissed, the Iraqi government said it might file civil suits in the United States and Iraq against XE or Blackwater, or whatever you want to call it. But its chances of success are not considered great. The families of many of the victims of the rampage accepted a settlement from XE last week, worried that had they pursued their civil suit, they might have gotten nothing. There are many reasons to oppose the private 
privatization of war. Reliance on contractors allows the government to work under the radar of public scrutiny. And this is not good in a supposed democracy. And freewheeling contractors or mercenaries can be at cross purposes with the armed forces. Blackwater's unsupervised or under-supervised guards undermine the effort to win Iraqi support. And it's even worse in Afghanistan or Pakistan or wherever Blackwater be. They are a stain, a seriously bad stain on the United States. But most fundamental is that the government cannot or will not keep a legal handle on its freelance gunmen or paid mercenaries. A nation of laws cannot go to war like that. And they called the United States civilized. There's something wrong with a contractor war. How do you know that the war is even based on truth? The contractors exist for themselves to make money. So what about that question? And there's something much more going on here. And these are more signs of the end times, transition days. There is a huge transition going on. It's a process. It happens over time, day by day, all around the world. And these are more signs.